मेमोरियल ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज आई एम सुरेश बसुमतारी आई क्यू सी कॉर्डिनेटर कोकराझार लॉ कॉलेज विद वन ग्रीटिंग इट गिव मी ग्रेट प्लेजर टू एक्सचेंज ए वार्म वेलकम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ कोकराझार लॉ कॉलेज कंडक्टिंग वेबिनार ऑन द टॉपिक ए ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्टरी नोट फॉर बिगिनर्स on fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy under the constitution of india <clears throat> uh, today in a 40th episode online lecture series we have the great pleasure to have as the guest of honor and as the keynote speaker uh, dr kohalat kumar brahmo faculty of law brm gob law college guwahati i heartily welcome you sir thank I you i heartily welcome you sir thank you thank you i also welcome our beloved principal i see ms prita bromho for her continuous support otherwise not possible to conduct webinar like this we welcome you madam thank you i also welcome all the students joining us i also welcome all the esteemed colleagues joining us i also welcome all other dignitaries joining us from other institutions uh, now uh, before we begin with our today's sessions uh, i would like to request ms prita bromho principal ic of kokrajar law college to welcome the today's keynote speaker dr prahlad kumar bromho sir and all the participants mm. 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 thank you suresh and good morning to one and all present uh, on today's fourth episode of niranjan kumar nazari online memorial lecture series organized by iqac kokrajhar law college uh, heartiest welcome to today's uh, guest speaker dr pranav kumar prabho assistant professor of brm government law college guwahati uh, i welcome you sir and uh, it gives me immense pleasure uh, to uh, have you amongst us and uh, your deliberation on the topic and enlighten the students who are soon going to appear in the examination to be conducted by the guwahati university and uh, thank you for uh, accepting our invitation as the guest speaker uh, within a short notice uh, thank you you sir and i also take the privilege in welcoming the teachers of kokrajhar law college non teaching staff of kokrajhar law college and other institutions heartiest welcome to the students and all other participants at the same time i also appreciate uh, iqac team of kokrajhar law college for taking an initiative to organize uh, such wonderful uh, program during the time of uh, global pandemic covid 19 in order to continue the academic activities and also uh, keeping the interest of the students and learners uh, so with this few words i welcome you sir uh, thank you to one and all present thank you uh, prita ma'am now i have the pleasure to introduce uh, the today's guest of honor before all of you dr prahlad kumar gopo faculty of law uh, brm gob law college guwahati did uh, did his master of law from the guwahati university and his area specializations was in constitutional and uh, administrative law uh, he has also completed bachelor of communications and journalism he was awarded phd degree by the guwahati university on the topic and political study on customary laws of bodo in assam uh, before joining sn assistant professor of law in b practicing lawyer in the guwahati high Yes. He has been contributed 
research papers in many international and national research journals. He participated in several national and uh, in international seminars. I would like to request Prabhupada. I request uh, Brahma sir to proceed the webinar now. Can I proceed now? No, we can. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Well, uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity to take part in interesting and very important, important session. And I thank you all as you uh, courage to, to hold such type of uh, lecture series, even during this pandemic situation. So thank you once again. Uh, well, let us start the session and uh, before starting the session, I would like to emphasize some basic thing that uh, that uh, today we will start with the topic that is uh, fundamental right and the directive principles of state policy. And here, as uh, the title of the title of the topic, I choose to add the word. A preparatory knot, and I use the word for the beginners, as because I have been told that this lecture series is basically meant for uh, students and those who who has uh, uh, not enough knowledge about the law. So I shall try to make you understand and we'll try to make that thing easy. So, uh, bear with me. And uh, as the topic, the Constitution itself is a vast area and we, we just choose some areas, some areas that is, uh, Fundamental right and the principle of state policy. The fundamental right itself is a vast area, and the, uh, the principle of state policy is also a vast area. So even then, we shall we shall uh, discuss it. So I will start with the term law. What law means, and what constitution means, and what constitutional law means and what is uh, studied under the constitution or what is included in the constitution of India. And be, uh, be sure that it's in every word, even the, even the comma or the uh, functions means a lot in, in case of law. So each and every word, each and every sentence has been included or enshrined in the Constitution after thorough deliberation. And these words or sentences has been inserted deliberately with certain motives. So uh, each and every provisions contained in the uh, part three, that is the fundamental right and the directive principles of state policy. Bears meaning and as I have already told you that uh, this provisions, this provisions has been uh, inserted willfully with certain objectives. Before that, let us have an idea about the constitution. The constitution 
it's nothing but a set of rules and remember the rules may be written or unwritten which governs a nation or a country and along with this we if it uh, terminologically or if technically if, if we want to define it that constitution is a set of rules may be written or unwritten which governs the organs of the government and we are governed by the provisions contained in the constitution of india so as we all know that constitution of india is not the result of an work which has been uh, done overnight it's not like this for drafting or to, for making the constitution many days took and uh, many debate took place so the constitution has been made by the framers of the constitution with certain objectives which bears the uh, sentiment of the freedom movement also and again as we have come to know that constitution itself has some features and as we we know that constitution of india is one of the longest constitution in the world it is the longest constitution in the world and as we we know that this constitution has been uh, framed by borrowing many provisions from different constitution in the world therefore it has been said that the constitution of india is nothing but the bag of borrowings even then though we we that means the uh, framers of the constitution try to uh, make the best constitution in the world therefore they try to pick up the best ones of the uh, different constitution in the world even then it is in elastically criticized that this constitution that is the constitution of india has left certain thing in ambiguity and it does not work properly therefore to evaluate the working of the constitution in the year 2000 under Uh, the chairmanship of m and venkata selia a committee was met to review the working of the constitution so this of course this is another part so this constitution though it is the longest constitution in the world even then this is not immune from the criticism even then though it has been criticized this constitution that is the constitution of india has been working and as uh, the situation is dynamic and some needs is required to be adapted to or we are supposed to adapt to the new that means dynamic situation therefore certain laws become uh, irrelevant or uh, impracticable therefore there is obvious reason to criticize the uh, constitution on ground of uh, falling short of certain thing but as a whole this constitution is working effectively now of course one thing we must we must to acknowledge that constitution is nothing but the rules set by the people and it is ultimately the people who makes it work therefore during the debate of the constituent assembly dr b r ambedkar said that 
however good a constitution may be, it is sure to turn out bad, because those who are called to work it happen to be a bad law. However bad a constitution may be, it may turn out to be a good if those who are called to work it happen to be good law. The working of the constitution does not depend only upon the nature of the constitution. The constitution can only provide the organs of the state, such as legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. The factors on which the working of this Organs of the state defend are the people and uh, political parties they will set up as their instruments to carry out their wishes and their politics. Who can say how the people of India and their parties will behave? So in this way, uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar said that it is ultimately the people who will make it work and if the people, that means who let it execute it, that means who execute the laws, if they are good, then obviously even the bad laws turns to be good one. So it's not proper to criticize the constitution or try to flaw the provisions of the constitution. Rather, it is wise to work on the basis of the constitution and if certain things are uh, irrelevant now, this can be amended. And this provision has been kept by the framers of the constitution of India. So this is something, uh, an introduction to the constitution. Now let us uh, start with our main topic, that is topic of the uh, Day, that means a topic of this session, that is fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy. So as I already told you that uh, these provisions, provisions contained in the constitution has been made deliberately. And each and every word, each and every sentence were put after thorough deliberation. So now, let us examine, as we have many parts in the Constitution of India, and some parts of the Constitution of India has more importance than the other. For example, if we see the provisions contained in Article 37 of the Constitution of India, we'll see that uh, the fundamental right is enforceable, on the other hand, the Provisions con uh, contained in direct principle of state policy are not enforceable. Now, question is that is fundamental rights are only things which require to be given importance. Whether we can sell the direct uh, the provisions or the uh, tenets contained in the uh, part four, that is uh, the directive principles of state policy. Let us examine it. So as I told that uh, this is for the beginners, let, let, me, let me clarify that I am trying to uh, stress on how we should study, that means how, should, how we should study the fundamental rights and the directive principles of start, state policy. As I, I, I stress on the, on the uh, beginners, that means. So I'll start how these two parts should be started and how these are given importance. So uh, as for Article 37, we can see that fundamental rights are enforceable and, on the other hand, uh, directive principles of state policies are not enforceable. And as we all know that uh, part three, that means fundamental rights chapter, that means this part, provides certain rights which are fundamental in nature. Fundamental in the sense that 
these are basic rights which are very important for leading a uh, normal and decent a uh, reasonable life so these are fundamental then on the other hand there are some provisions contained in the directive principles of state policy which appears to be providing some rights for example if we talk about article 45 article 45 provided that the state should provide facilities for having education that means this article uh, directs the states to provide certain facilities for having education so now see this article article 45 that means 45 in original or uh, original form it has been kept in part 4 that is uh, directive principles of state policy now after amendment this provision that means uh, article 37's provision sorry 45's provision has been uh, declared as fundamental rights by article 21 capital a so see uh, here there are some provisions for example if we talk about article 39 and article 39 uh, capital a this speaks about certain rights but in original form this was not enforceable not enforceable like that of the fundamental right now as i pose the question that why this has been kept in such position that means why this rights why this rights has been kept as non enforceable rights and why only the fundamental rights has been uh, given the status of such right which can be enforced so as i told you that uh, this provisions has been uh, inserted willfully and after thorough deliberation this were kept deliberately by the framers of the constitution for that we will have to see the past histories and the situations during the time of framing of the constitution so as we have uh, seen that this part 3 that means fundamental rights uh, part provides us certain rights let us examine why this uh, this set of rights has been provided to the citizens of india and in some some cases to the people of india here we will have to uh, understand that this uh, fundamental rights fundamental rights provides certain rights only for citizens and in certain cases some of the articles particularly article 21 speaks about the right which is to be which is admissible to the non citizen also so let, let us examine how and why this rights has been uh, set in the fundamental right chapter that is part 3 of the constitution of india if we see the time that means uh, moment when the constitution was ram that is in the year 1946 as we we, we know that uh, the constituent assembly constituted in the year 1946 that means the drafting of the constitution that means present constitution started from the year 1946 what happened during that time 
His time was the time, that means the world order was that. The world order was all about providing rights, that means basic rights to the people. That means after the end of the World War II, in the world a situation arose. Almost all people were expected to have certain rights, which are considered to be basic rights. And in another another name, that is human rights. Human rights. So this was the time. That means the time, that means the period when the constitution was drafted, that means when the constitution drafting was started, this was the time of providing human rights to the human being, irrespective of the territorial barrier. So this was the momentum that the basic rights should be provided to the people. That means for for living humanly, certain rights are expected to be provided to the human being. Therefore, the premise of the constitution were also moved, or uh, they were also swayed by the momentum that is providing certain rights, basic rights. So they were also being influenced by different different uh, uh, provisions contained in the constitution of different countries with regard to providing rights. Particularly, that means uh, uh, constitution of USA. The constitution of USA is the shortest constitution in the world. Even then, the constitution of the framers of the constitution of India or influenced by the provisions of the Constitution of USA. So they were also influenced and accordingly the uh, premise of the Constitution were swayed by the sets of rights provided in the Bill of Rights in USA. And therefore they also thought that the certain sets of, ru sets of rules, that means laws, is to be provided in the constitution and accordingly they uh, propounded certain uh, rules, certain laws, which has been kept as provisions relating to rights. That means the basic rights. As I told you that there are some basic rights which are included in, in, in the uh, chapter DPSP also. That means those rights appears to be basic have been incorporated not in the fundamental rights but in the uh, directive principles of state policies. And as I told you, I again remind that this has been done deliberately. Now question arises, why this basic rights has been included in the uh, directive principles of state policy instead of fundamental rights uh, part. So here, as I told you that the uh, constitution makers uh, selected some rights, selected some rights and this has been bifurcated as fundamental rights and this others has been kept in the directive principles of state policy. So if we examine the whole contents of the fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy, we can see that fundamental rights and directive principles of state policies are in certain aspect interrelated or interdependent. As if we talk about uh, right to education, if we talk about right to education, which has been considered to be very, very inherent 
to the right to life, which has been uh, given in Article 21. So here, if we examine that, even this right to education, then again, if we talk about right to equality, which has been provided in Article uh, 14, this are, that means some principles of this rights, basic rights, has been included in the directive principles of state policy. And as I time and again remind that these were intentionally did or worked out. So these are uh, kept in the directive principles of state policy. And remember one thing that the framers of the constitution said some rights without bifurcating this as fundamental right and directive principles of state policy in initial stage. They just provided rights, fundamental rights. And in original position, that means uh, in initial position, during the uh, constituent assembly uh, meetings, these were sets of rights and not as directive principles of state policy. Only after deliberation and after e examining certain aspects, this has been uh, bifurcated. And why this has been bifurcated and kept into two parts? Because some basic rights which are immediately required, this rights have been kept in part three, that is fundamental right. And certain rights which are otherwise required and very vital, but this cannot be materialized or the uh, government, that means the newly formed government may not be able to execute it or to materialize it. Therefore, those rights has been kept as policy decision and this has been kept as the principles which the states will have to make laws on the basis of those uh, rules which is otherwise talked about rights. So these are the principles that means these rights are the directives for the states in making the law. And therefore, this set of rights, which has been now kept in the, the uh, directive principles of state policy, this, this, this provisions, that means right, the provisions relating to some rights has been kept as the principles which the state is required to be taken as policy in, in, in a policy decision. Why? Because in certain, certain, certain cases, we can see that these are not, these are not executable during that time. And during that time, that means uh, during the time of initial stage of the working of the constitution. That means, uh, as we, we know that a new form, a new, new government is supposed to be formed and there, are, there would be many, many challenges. There would be many challenges to the new form government to deal with. Therefore, in certain area, on certain matters, the government may not be able to deal with directly. Therefore, it has been thought that these are kept or this should be kept as policy decision to be worked out in later states by keeping, keeping eye on the change of the situation, that means uh, development of the society. For example, uh, to make you uh, understand, I would like to uh, give some example. For example, uh, 
uh, article article 44 speaks about uh, uniform civil court article 44 speaks about universe, uniform civil court and if we talk about uniform civil court then certain certain uh, issues which relates to religion also uh, comes under the purview of the uh, uniform civil court so if uniform civil court is to be met and if this is provided as a matter of right then obviously if this provision is kept as enforceable then obviously the individuals that mean the citizens may approach the court and the court that means the judiciary will have to direct the government to implement it then if the government tries to implement it during that time itself then obviously there would have been chaotic more chaotic situation as the society is not so much developed and if we talk about the uh, uniform civil court then question of equality also involved how it involves Suppose if we talk about uh, uniform civil court, that means the laws, that means civil laws should be uniform to all, irrespective of caste and creed or religion. Therefore, all are supposed to be governed by a single set of civil law be it succession or be it uh, marriage or be it uh, adoption, whatever may be. So these are supposed to be governed by a set of civil law, which is, uh, which is supposed to be applicable to all. So if we talk about, uh, uh, that means uh, if we talk about the marriage, then obviously there would be differences suppose marriage solemnized by the hindu is different to that of the marriage solemnized by a, a muslim so it appears that th this two two community particularly I'm, I'm just giving the example this two communities are uh, uh, governed by different sets of laws with regard to marriage so here if we try to impose a uniform law in the name of bringing uniform civil court, then obviously this would have been uh, materialized the object of right to equality. But at the same time, it would have been uh, floated by the communities. That means the communities or the society would not have uh, accepted that type of law. So, we can see that though the Uniform Civil Court involves equality also, which has been provided now under Article 14, is also would have been affected. So, as the Uniform Civil Court touch the or it also involves the question of equality also then the uh, that means in the name of in the name of bringing one law one civil law for all the people in india then it would have affected the right to religion also then obviously the society would not have accepted it and rather it there would have been more chaotic situation so we we can see that in this way certain provisions are there in the directive principles which also relates to some ri fundamental rights to uh, fundamental rights which has been uh, uh, enshrined in the part three of the constitution of india this are 
kept there because this uh, articles that means this uh, provisions cannot be worked out during that period so this are uh, though fundamental cannot be instantly worked out therefore this sets of rights has been kept as the principles which is to be dealt with under policy decision so in this way we we, we can see that uh, this rights that means some rights provided under directive principles of state policy are interrelated to the rights provided in the uh, part three of the constitution of india so if we talk about uh, article article 14 right to equality if we talk about right to equality then all are supposed to be equal in the eye of law and if we talk about this if we stress on that that means all are equal in the eye of law then why there are separate provisions for uh, uh, matters related to marriage or succession this personal laws so called personal laws which emanated from the religions appears to be contrary to the provisions contained in article 14 and this is antagonist this are the antagonist which hindered for bringing out uniform civil court so uh, this personal uh, personal laws that means the methods related to personal laws which has been uh, uh, dealt though in uh, partially in uh, fundamental rights even then this this provisions has been kept in the directive principle as uh, uh, provisions as policy decision therefore the framers of the constitution thought that the provisions which has been segregated and kept in the uh, uh, directive principles of state policy cannot be made enforceable and therefore specifically under article 37 it has been it has been uh, specifically mentioned that this that means fundamental uh, though fundamental but uh, kept in the in the directive principles of state policy this cannot be enforced before the law so in this way we will have to see that uh, the, see the background of uh, enshrining this set of rights in two parts that is fundamental right part and the directive principles of state policy then again one thing we'll have to see the contents of the uh, fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy if we examine the uh, provisions contained in these two parts we'll we'll see the reflection of the preamble of the constitution of india that is preamble as it has been said that preamble reflects the i reflects the uh, contents of the constitution in this way this particularly these two parts part three and part four of the constitution of india reflects the, the, the speaks about the ideal that means the objective of the uh, constitution of india as we know that the freedom of india that means uh, independence of india has been achieved through through struggles for several hundred years and during the time of freedom movement it has been said that equality is a must and all are supposed to be treated equality for which the people revolted against the discriminatory behavior of the english people and in this way it was the mindset of the people of india that what 
independent nation we will get obviously this damned nation must provide equal opportunity to all the people in that country therefore equality has been kept as a uh, foremost important thing uh, as as a uh, foremost uh, tenets and therefore the framers of the constitution kept in my mind that there must be equality and there must be justice as this a nation that means the india has been suffered from discrimination they were denied justice by the british people therefore they deserve or that means they they want justice and this justice must be provided to all in the country of india so they keeping in mind of this sentiment provided certain provisions specifically in the constitution in the name of providing justice therefore as reflector of the constitution the constitution constitution in its preamble speak about the justice that is uh, social political economic and in this way it has been attempted that means an endeavor has been made to provide justice to all justice to all and this justice are social economic and political therefore all are expected that means that the uh, people of india are expected to have justice social economic and political then again as india suffered suffered uh, or uh, from discrimination and they were denied liberty therefore the framers of the constitution keeping in mind of that sentiment try to provide liberty then equality as i have already told to you that this is that means the equality of status and opportunity as we 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 can see that the britishers discriminated and equality equal opportunity was denied to the people of india during the british rule therefore being experienced by this situation the framers of the constitution try to uh, try to provide equality of opportunity and status and now matter is that uh, this this provisions that means this goals set like uh, justice liberty equality and fraternity which has been uh, reflected in the preamble are the words which manifest the ideal set in this two particularly two parts that is part 3 and part 4 if we talk about equality that means equality of opportunity and equality of status then we can see that article 14 15 and 16 then 17 18 the up to up to uh 21 22 20 23 in this way we can see that this all article speaks about uh, speak about uh, equality of status and opportunity in this way if we talk about liberty of thought expression belief faith and ownership obviously article 19 and then uh, 21 and 22 this speaks about uh, liberty of thought expression belief faith and ownership so this this uh, article then again uh, if we talk about article uh, uh, 21 it speaks about 
uh, live, right to life and uh, liberty. So in this way, under uh, part three of the Constitution of India, we can see that there are provisions which which deals with the wordings reflected in the uh, re reflected in the preamble. And if we talk about justice, justice that is social, economic, and political, which has been uh, inserted in the preamble. If we talk about justice, this justice, social justice, economic justice, and political justice, this has been uh, basically inserted in part four of the Constitution of India. If we talk about uh, uh, justice, then we will see that Article 19 speaks, uh, sorry, Article 39 speaks about justice, social justice, then Article 30, uh, 39 uh, speaks about uh, legal age. 39 capital A speaks about legal age. In this way, these provisions contained in part four of the Constitution of India also uh, in some area are very important if we talk about uh, that means Article 39, uh, capital A. If we talk about Article 39, capital A, which provides legal, uh, uh, free legal aid, or if, if, if we talk about Article 49 only, then we can see that uh, all are supposed to be treated equally, men and women should be treated equally, which is in another uh, otherwise some tenets which has been reflected in article article 14, 15 and 16. That means article article uh, 14 speaks about equality. If we talk about equality, obviously both the uh, both the uh, person of uh, uh, that means women and men, that means male and female are supposed to be treated equally. So Article 39 speaks about this principle that is, uh, uh, that means men and women to be treated equally, e equally and they must have the similar rights, which is, uh, which has been reflected in Article uh, 14 also. But why a question arises why in spite of uh, provisions contained in article 14 again article 39 has been uh, kept that means uh, that means uh, equality of uh, opportunity of men and women that means that means uh, all are supposed to be treated equally so why because during during that time, that means during the time of framing of the constitution, the society was in such a position that the women were not allowed to have education and they were not allowed to work. They were not allowed to avail certain rights. And this this system, that means the dogmas of society were not allow allow the uh, woman being that means uh, female folk to do certain things and this are prevented by the social system therefore complete equality could not be provided to all all here means uh, to women as the uh, society was not so developed so uh, to allow the woman being to go to the school and to work in certain areas. Therefore, if complete equality is provided to, and if that was uh, un uh, made enforceable, then obviously there would have been chaotic situation in the society. Therefore, this provisions has been kept 
as principles to be dealt with through policy decision. So in this way, if we talk about social justice, that means uh, discrimination, that means uh, if we talk about untouchability, this provisions has been kept in the fundamental rights chapter, but this could not be uh, executed. And this has been therefore again been kept as provisions uh, in the directive principles of state, state policy uh, for, for providing social justice to all. And in this way, you can see that uh, uh, in different, different provisions contained in uh, directive principles of state policy, uh, these are some supplementary provisions to uh, materialize the object of the fundamental rights sector, that is the uh, provisions contained in part three of the Constitution of India. Therefore, in this way, you will have to study. That means one has to study the provisions contained in fundamental rights and uh, directive principles of state policy. And we'll have to keep in mind that if we want to uh, make the things easy, that means if we want to make things easier to understand, then we should we should study it by relating the matters to the uh, uh, practical situation. For example, if we talk about right to life, right to life, which has been uh, uh, expanded by different, uh, different expanded by the judiciary in different decision, through di different decision. So right to life here, we can, if we, we can uh, try to understand, if we try to understand that right to life, what it, it imply? right to life, that means right to be alive. That means if we are supposed to be alive, then not, uh, we should not be uh, alive in such a, uh, such, uh, such a situation or in such a way that uh, we are just living, nothing has been provided. So this, this cannot be considered as uh, having a life in true sense. So, uh, for having a sensible life, that means uh, that means decent life, then certain facilities are supposed to be provided. For example, education, right to education. Therefore, the Supreme Court said that right to education is inherent right, which has been inherently there in the right to life. So in this way, we'll have to uh, study by relating it to the practical life. So I think uh, time is up, so I should conclude. So uh, as beginner, I, I would like to uh, suggest that we, if, we, if, we, uh, we through, if we want to understand the contents of the constitution, we'll have to first uh, know the situation of the situation of the framing of the constitution there and thereafter we'll have to relate it to the present uh, present that means a practical life and in this way i think uh, uh, the things will be more easier to understand and uh, of course as situation is dynamic and a constitution requires to be a dynamic therefore the constitution is considered to be a living organism. The provisions contained in the constitution is supposed to be uh, read with by by uh, uh, read with by relating the things to the practical practical situation. So for which provisions of amendment has been provided, and in this way the uh, part three of the constitution provided rights. Uh, fundamental right that is basic rights and part four also speaks about right which is supplementary to the fundamental right and uh, as we have seen that the 
in some cases, fundamental right cannot be uh, materialized without taking help from the provisions contained in the directive principles of state policy. Therefore, the, these days, uh, provisions contained in directive principles is not subordinate to the fundamental rights, though this may be non-enforceable, but these are very much important as that of fundamental rights. And I think I should conclude. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, sir. Over to you, over to you, Suresh. Is there any queries, or I should stop? Uh, stop. Uh, Suresh, can you hear? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Okay, sir. Uh, yes, please. Sure. Can you hear? Yes, I can hear, but uh, okay, sure. No, I'm talking about Suresh. Yeah, Suresh. Uh, I think uh, it's okay, Suresh. You can uh, leave it. I will. I will. Take Message is not a uh, visible matter. Sorry. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, uh, Prahlad, you sir, for the excellent yeah. deliberation. Actually, okay. Uh, and then, uh, sir, I one question was there, sir. One question. Uh, interrelation please, between. Please the tell, me, tell me the question, please. The question was that the uh, one student Anwar Hussain, uh, he is asking that. My question is that: uh. What are the aim and objectives and swing? in the directive principle of state policy and why does provide this directive principle of state policy uh, to the citizens of India by lawmaker, sir? Uh, pardon, please repeat the question, please. I'm not clearly the hearing it. The question is said, what are the aim and objectives and swing in the directive principle uh. of state policy and why does okay. provide this directive principle of state policy uh, to the citizens of India by lawmaker. Okay. That means uh, uh, objective of the directive principles of state policy and why it, this has been inserted in the constitution. This is the question, is it not? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, direct, directive principles of state policy, I have already uh, uh, mentioned in, in my lecture is that uh, these are the principles which are supposed to be taken up as policy decisions by the state. Because uh, during that time, the society was not so much developed. And as during that time, the uh, newly formed government, that means the uh, government formed under the new constitution, had many challenges. Challenges, one, one can, I, I, I mentioned that uh, many of the uh, parts of the Indian territory tried to secede and uh, question of, uh, question of uh, religious ba religion based dominion also arose during that time. So if those, uh, those fundamental things were executed or if the government made laws and imposed imposed that law uh, forcefully then obviously there would have been a uh, chaotic situation a chaotic situation and there would have been a revolt so uh, this this has been a uh, self as non enforceable and as they they told that they, 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 they thought that that means the constitution maker thought that once the the society will grown up that means society will be developed and the people will be more understandable that means more more aware and obviously during that time 
the state government, that means the concerned government, will be able to take decision. Therefore, this this were inserted in directive principles. That means as directives for taking policy decision as principles for governing the country. So this is why this has been inserted. Now, if we talk about the objective of the uh, directive principles, these are the objectives. These are the objectives which has been uh, endeavored to achieve. That means, as we know that India got independence through uh, Okay, by mistake, sir got disconnected. Kindly, uh, kindly stay, stay in tune. Sir got disconnected. So please uh, have patience. Okay, sir is back. Uh, sir, please unmute yourself. Prahulat, sir, kindly unmute yourself. Hello, uh, yes. can you hear me? Uh, yes, 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 sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, these are the objectives. These are the objectives. Uh, that means, these are the basic basic objectives that means uh, what was the objective of having a constitution that means again we will have to uh, see what is the objective of having a constitution and what is supposed to be uh, achieved by the constitution the constitution as we we came to know that it is nothing but the set of rules which govern the uh, that means country, that means which regulates the behavior of the individual as well as the organs of the government. So, here the organs, uh, that means objective of the government is to provide justice, security, then equality. In this way, we can see that in this part, that means uh, direct principles of state policy part, we can see that this provisions provide certain social justice, political justice, then economic justice also. So these are the objectives which is sought to be achieved through this constitution. And this, again, I remind you that this has been kept as unenforceable because the situation was not conducive. And that, uh, the, the situation was, that means the uh, development of the society was not so, so high, that means not driven. Therefore, this has been kept in the directive principles as the set of principles which is to be uh, undertaken as a policy decision. So these are the objectives. Objectives to provide social, economic, political justice, then equality of opportunity. For example, if we talk about Article, uh, that means 45, then 44, uh, sorry, 45, then 39, particularly, this, uh, this speaks about, uh, that means equality, that means right to work, to education, and public assistance. This, these are the provisions which basically tries to provide uh, social justice, then uh, equality, that means equality of opportunity. So in this way, the, under this uh, uh, part, that means uh, part four of the Constitution of India, this uh, the principles, that means uh, provisions has been kept. I think uh, I, could, I could help to understand a few. 
तुझा yes, क्वेश्चन आहे कंट्रीज this law sometimes uh, violates our fundamental rights such as right to okay. life where a person is shot by the armed personnel in suspicion is hmm. there any alternative to such draconian law as afspa or uapa where our okay. fundamental rights and dpsp could prevail in a way more dynamic okay okay uh to to answer this question uh, i i will have to refer to bentham's theory okay bentham's theory you may not heard heard the bentham's theory that is theory of pleasure and pain pleasure to the maximum number of people and pain to a section of people that means his objective is to uh, that means the according to him legislation should be made for providing maximum pleasure that means maximum benefit to the maximum number of people and in making benefit to maximum number of people a few individuals or some some persons limited in number may suffer so in such case in the interest of the greatest number of the people so uh, there may be curtailment there may be some some pain on the part of the uh, section of people here with this he tries to mention that if uh, to secure maximum number of people then a section of people may have some pain that means uh, some some rights of a section of people may be at stake for this we can we, uh, we can we can refer that suppose uh, this act is uh, that means uh, the objective of that particular law that means which is uh, which is a special law special law uapa and prevention uh, activities prevention act or afspa armed forces special powers act these are met with special reason with special objective what is the objective objective is that to curtail insurgency or terrorists what the terrorist does what the insurgent does on the activity of the insurgent or uh, of a terrorist maximum number pe- number of people may suffer this has been this has been uh, discussed in that de- de- way that means if the uh, terrorist that means a few people that means a section of people are not prevented then maximum number of people will be suffered therefore a law should be brought a law should be brought to prevent this therefore in uh afspa that means armed forces special power act as it has been witnessed or it has been observed that by taking the plea of the laws by taking the plea of the laws or in the name of uh in the name of human rights and the human rights those people are using using those those human rights groups or uh, uh, this human rights point as their shield to protect them therefore again in, uh, it it has been uh, anticipated that as those insurgents or groups of uh, terrorists 
are open to to do any activity they are free to do any activity they they can lob grenade they can fire they can shoot at but on the other hand the the uh, forces the, that means the government forces are bound by laws they cannot they cannot shoot they cannot do anything even if they they find the intrusion or the extremists therefore a special law has been made giving power so that it equalizes it equalizes to the insurgent insurgent or the extremist so this armed forces special power act has been met uh, this has been met by providing special powers to the armed forces to shoot at sight without the permission of the uh, magistrate so this is a special law and this this law has been challenged in the uh, in the uh, court also uh, and and uh, a, a human rights group from nagaland challenged this law and and the supreme court was of the opinion that this is met with special objective and this theory that is a theory of bentham that means these are that means benefit or, or maximum number and uh a curtailment of rights of certain a section of people has been upheld so here the objective of that that law that means special law be it a uh, a uh, Uh, unlawful prevention activities act or aspa this has been made as a special law and this is applicable only to to those areas which has been considered as or declared as disturbed area so this is the objective and if we talk about other alternative remedy then uh, obviously if uh, we 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 examine the provisions obviously it appears that this has taken away some rights that means human rights of the people and it has given arbitrary power to the armed forces this it is appeared to be appear to be uh, true apparently it is true but if we consider another aspect suppose if we 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 don't uh, neutralize or if we don't bring stringent laws to uh, curtail the insurgent or uh, uh, that means extremist activities which if happens incurs a lot loss that means it affects a uh, huge number of people that means public so uh, this, this this may be uh, this may be uh, in in that way rational or reasonable to have uh, this this loss that means uh, this is the reason why this loss has been brought and if we consider the public safety obviously it it appears that yes some reason that means it is that means it appears to be reasonable to have such type of law also i think to some extent i i could throw light thank you uh, sir yes, sir, yes. for your clear explanations i think there is no further question from the participant side okay now i would like to request dr pranay kumar aditya sir director of iqsc kokrajhar law college to give word of thanks of today's webinar session i request aditya sir to give the word of thanks <coughs> a very warm welcome to dr prahlad kumar brahmo assistant professor of brm law college and if i am not wrong once perhaps i had an opportunity to meet him in guwahati long back anyway today yes. 
it is it is a pleasure yes. on my part to see you again sir uh, interacting with the students and the faculty members so most respected uh, um, our guest speaker today dr bromo along with respected principal in charge of kokrajhar law college ms pita bromo faculty members uh, my dear students teaching and non teaching staff and uh, most respected participants across the other parts of uh, our uh, college and uh, other parts of the state for participating in niranjan kumar nargiri memorial lecture uh, niranjan kumar nargiri memorial lecture because niranjan kumar nargiri was the founder principal of this college and he was a pioneer in the field of law made a tremendous contribution for the establishment of our institution so we are all grateful to him and remain get grateful forever in today's lecture series dr bromo has uh, a very elaborate topic on the introductory note for beginners on fundamental rights and directive principle of state policy under the constitution of india in which he has elaborated uh, the forces which has made uh, the making of our our constitution possible mm, with the chairman with the with the chairman dr b r ambedkar in as the father of uh, the drafting the committee of the constitution and he has also mentioned about the aspiration sentiment of the people and in that way he explained constitutionalism and um, again how the constitution has incorporated several good things from other countries like usa ussr canada and whatever but the purpose is to make our people satisfied with the constitution as a result of the freedom struggle which led to make india independent and uh, make our constitution friendly Uh, to the people of india for the establishment of a welfare state and to bring faith confidence among the people anyway he has made a very strong discussion on certain articles of fundamental rights like article 14 then article 19 article 21 besides uh, talking on article 44 45 Uh, etc from directive principles of state policy he has very nicely elaborated on the importance of uh, social justice in our constitutional setup for uh, uh, for enlarging liberty and equality among the people and how there are some confusions and some challenging task in conflict situations of uh, of incorporating or of bringing in uniform civil code in the country at the same time he has related how with the, uh, the fundamental rights and directive principles of the preamble of the country and therefore i feel the students those who have attended today are immensely benefited he has made a very nice interaction with two questions that has been put to him so from the core of my heart and on behalf of IQAC cell of Kokrajhar Law College I extend my gratefulness to you sir and in future we hope we will get you again back with the students also in Kokrajhar physically or in the virtual platform whatever it is so um, I wish you all a great time ahead thank you very much thank you all thank you thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prahlad, sir, for your uh, deliberation. Indeed, I, my, okay. I personally is also benefited a lot with this session, and I'm sure the students are very yeah. much delighted and their mind have been refreshed by your speech on fundamental rights and the PSP of Constitution of India. We hope to see you again, sir, in the future times. Yeah. And you are very much welcome to our college. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah.
reply you may please this and we will also okay. make sure to arrange some program to invite you and to have you physically in our campus and uh, i yeah. thank the participants also for the patient hearing and tomorrow we will meet again tomorrow we have another session by dr bhuvan borua principal of nef law college uh, thank you once and all sandana ma'am do you want to talk yes 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 दातन Thank you, sir. All done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh?